Hey, Alice, what's wrong with you? Esther, it's been a while. Everything is just fine. Why did you ask that? Why did I ask that? It's because you didn't contact me at all. It's terrible of you to keep such an important thing from me as a secret. I'm sorry, I've just been so busy lately. I heard about that. You guys bought a condo, didn't you? And it's a high rise. That's amazing. My son, Hector, spent a lot of money on it. Did Hector tell you about that? I was going to contact you when everything gets settled. I've been so busy with the move. I'm sorry I haven't been able to contact you. You should have contacted me, you know. I was surprised to hear about it yesterday. I'm so excited to hear that you're moving to a high rise in New York City. I'm so happy for you that you were able to marry Hector, Alice. Thanks to Hector that you're now a member of the upper class society. Well, yes. I had no problem living in the apartment I've been living in before we moved out. But Hector insisted that he wanted to live in a high rise. A high rise. He's worked hard for that. He says he's recently been promoted as a department manager. He's indeed a brilliant kid, just like me. There's no way a person in his position would live in such a shabby apartment you were living in. He was right to take the plunge without listening to a poor woman like you. You should be grateful to my son, since he's the one who's providing for you. Oh, gosh. So, I'm thinking of going to see your new home sometime in the near future. When are you available? Tomorrow? What? Tomorrow? Well, sorry, Esther. I don't think tomorrow works. We just moved in, so things aren't organized yet. Besides, I've got a lot of work to do because of the move. So, I'd appreciate it if you could reschedule your visit. You said you just moved in. It's been a month, right? No matter how big the condo is, it can be organized in a month. You're not skipping work by saying that you're busy, are you? I'm not slacking off. I'm also working, so I can't spend all my time just for cleaning up. What work? You're a housewife, so cleaning up comes first, right? It's a different case this time. Besides, you know, this month, the kids have school events, so I don't have much time. I've almost finished the living room and our stuff. But Hector hasn't put away his personal belongings. There are still a lot of cardboard boxes inside the room. Why don't you take care of those things right away? What a useless wife. Thanks to Hector that you were able to move into a high rise. And now you're telling me that you can't even clean up for him? You're not doing your job properly as my son's wife. I'm also working, so I'm supposed to take care of myself. I do most of the childcare and house chores. Of course you do those things. Your job doesn't pay much anyway. It's natural for a woman to take care of the house chores. It's also a woman's job to take care of her husband. So stop messing around and get all things done. Jeez. Oh yes, how are my lovely grandchildren? They haven't been visiting me lately, which is kind of boring. They are doing just fine. They're both in upper grades of elementary school now. So they're busy with club activities and playing with their friends. I see. They're very bright just like me and Hector. They share their genes with their grandmother. You have to let them come visit me regularly. We need to make them understand how blessed they are to have my son as their father and me as their grandmother. Don't you understand that unless I tell you? You really are a very inconsiderate wife. I'm really glad that my grandchildren are different from you. I'm sorry. I'll tell the kids about that later. Oh my God, I guess I gotta go. If tomorrow doesn't work, I'll come visit you this weekend. You better make sure there are some good snacks and tea when I visit you. A good wife takes care of such things. This weekend? I have plans this weekend. Cancel those plans! I just told you that I'll visit you. You said tomorrow doesn't work, so I'm giving you a compromise. I have a meeting at work. You just gave me a short notice, and I can't make it because I have a prior engagement. Reuniting grandma with the grandkids is the top priority. Hector said that he'd be home this weekend. A good wife should be able to fit her husband's schedule into her own. Why don't you take time off to accommodate your husband's schedule? If you put in work meetings, you wouldn't be able to take care of your husband. You don't know enough about being a good wife. I don't know why you're suddenly telling me this, but... Yes, whatever. I've had enough of your appeal about being an incapable wife. 
I'll eat dinner and go home, so please take care of me. I'll even check your level of cooking. If you serve me a half-baked dish, I'll give you a private lecture about how to cook properly. See you later. Wait, Esther. You're troubling me. Oh, dear. Hey, Alice. A high-rise is awesome, isn't it? It's the perfect place for brilliant people like me, my son, and my grandchildren to live. It feels so good to look down on people from a higher floor. It looks as if those poor people were crawling on the ground. Good evening, Esther. Uh, how can I help you? Oh, I'm sorry. I got lost in my own world. You know what? I'm so excited that I'm going to be able to live in that world. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Are you moving to a high-rise too? Yes! That's what I mean! I went to your place the other day and the thought just crossed my mind. I'm the one who deserves to live here. I just knew it. What? Are you telling me that you're moving in with us? I thought you bought a room at the high rise yourself. Why would I have to buy it myself when I already have one I can live in? It's my son and his wife's house, which means it's also mine. No, you can't have such an important matter decided without me and my husband's permission. I'll have to talk to Hector about it. Oh, you didn't hear from him? My son already agreed to it. What's that? I haven't heard that at all. Living in a high-rise will give me peace of mind in my old age. I've been thinking that it's about time Hector and I move in together. It's a good thing he bought a condo. I'll get my stuff there tomorrow, so please clean up the mess. Are you kidding me? Wait a minute. That's too selfish. You can't move into the house since we don't have enough room. Each of the four of us has our own room. The only space available is the living room. You don't need a room of your own, Alice. When I saw it the other day, I liked the view from your room the best. Starting tomorrow, that will be my room. I won't hear any objections. You should sleep in the living room. That's good enough for you. You should be thankful that you live in a high rise. I can't do that. I take my work home with me. Besides, I also do remote work some days in the week. I need a room where I can work in peace. Besides, it's such a short notice. I'll be at work tomorrow, so I won't be able to pick up the packages. Alice, you know what? You're not doing much work anyway, so why don't you just take a day off? Your mother-in-law just told you that she's moving out. It's your duty as my son's wife to take a day off from your work and greet her politely. You must be really incompetent if you don't understand that. I really feel sorry for Hector, who married a terrible person like you. Huh? I told you that I can't do that, so please understand, Esther. Hector knows that you are moving in, right? Then he's the one who should take a day off to help you. I didn't know about the move until some minutes ago, so I can't take a day off if you suddenly ask me to. You really are an idiot. My son has an important job to support his family. He can't just suddenly take a day off. You seem to have a strange pride in your work. You earn less than Hector, you have no responsibility, and your job is worthless, right? It's natural for a woman to be a housewife and take care of the family, but you're just too proud to do so. But to make my son, the breadwinner of the family, take a day off because of your petty pride is beyond insane. You are such a useless wife that you can't even understand such a thing. When I move there, you'll have to educate your children well. They shouldn't grow up to be a person like you. Anyway, tomorrow when you get my stuff, take everything out of the cardboard boxes and organize them. Since you seem to have a lot of good furnitures, you can keep those in your room. I'll use it. I'll be there tomorrow for dinner. If it's not done when I get there, I won't forgive you. That's absurd. You really are troubling me. I won't give up my room or my furniture. If you love Hector so much, then you should use his room. You should take care of the moving by yourself since I won't be able to help you. I've already reserved a moving company. Also, I signed a contract to sell the house I've been living in. 
I can't change the date. Besides, Hector needs his private time too. It's true that me and my son get along well together, but I don't like the idea of us sharing the same bedroom. So I can't take your suggestion. As a wife, you should live your life with us as a family. I'm taking care of a useless wife like you without abandoning you. You should be grateful for that. Why are you being so rebellious? Taking care of me? Hector doesn't take care of the house chores and looks after the kids at all. I'm the one doing all of them. And on top of that, you insist to move in with us? It's beyond unreasonable. You just can't do it because you're a bad wife. You're not even aware that it's normal for mother-in-law to move in with her son and his family. I'm going to give you a good lesson. You should be grateful to me for teaching you the common sense of this world. Even though you're an insane, useless wife, you're able to live in a high rise. Thanks to me and my son. See you tomorrow. Wait, Esther, I can't believe it. Hey, Alice, what are you doing? You don't have to come home again. What are you talking about all of a sudden? What's wrong with you? Don't you dare to talk to me like that. Hector told me about you. I heard you're having an affair while he's supporting you. You ungrateful bastard. You're not only useless, but you're also betraying your husband. What a despicable wife. What? Another mysterious accusation? I never committed an adultery. Did Hector really say that? My sweet son was crying and asking me for advice. He said he's thinking of divorcing you because you're having an affair. He doesn't even want to see you anymore. He let a useless wife like you to live in a high rise, but you betrayed him. No wonder he's in shock. That's why I won't let you enter the house when you get back. Oh, well, that's fine. I'm not going back there. You're such a good girl. Are you going to elope with your boyfriend? What an irresponsible mother. Well, that's convenient for us, so you can do what you want. We'll get full custody of the kids, of course. You'll never see your beautiful children again. I'll educate them in the ways of the upper class and raise them to be respectable children. Esther, you always have such interesting things to say. You've got it all wrong and you're so proud of yourself. Unfortunately, the children will never go back to that house again. The only ones who will remain there are you and Hector. Huh? What on earth are you talking about? I'm in the process of cleaning up the new house where me and my children will live. I've told the kids where this house is. I guess it's about time they come home. We will start a new life here so you and Hector can live in harmony without me and the kids. I know you're going to have a lot of trouble in the future, but good luck anyway. I don't get it. What do you mean that you've got yourself a new house? You are being deceived by your dearly beloved son, you know that? Hector is the one who was actually having an affair. Seriously? A kind and serious boy like Hector having an affair? He would never do such a thing. You're just trying to put the blame on my son, aren't you? Wow, I'm speechless. You love your son very much. You may find this hard to believe. I have the proof with me, so you can't get away with it. If you have the proof, show me then. It's a lie you made up anyway, isn't it? I'll show it to you if you want to see it. This is the proof that your son is having an affair. Before we moved into the high rise, I knew something was wrong. I noticed that he often went out alone on his days off. He usually doesn't work overtime since his workload isn't that much. But then he told me that he wants to move to a high rise for the future. I thought he was spending his time outside to do some research for the property. But I was wrong. I was cleaning Hector's room shortly after we moved in. I found a woman's jewelry that wasn't mine under my bed. So I took a sneak peek at Hector's cell phone and was convinced that he was having an affair. Hector brought his lover into the apartment we just moved into. Really? Even if that's true, what drove my son to the point of considering divorce is your fault because you are such a useless wife. That's why he decided to have an affair. 
You're getting carried away by saying you have the proof. You are the main cause Hector wants a divorce. A useless wife like you are not supposed to talk so proud like that. How dare you say that I'm useless? Since this is the last time I'm going to say what I want to say to you, I paid for that high rise with all my money. Hector doesn't pay at all. Therefore, the ownership of the room is mine. Huh? Stop talking nonsense. Do you think you can afford that when you don't even have a proper job? You should think more carefully before you lie. You're getting carried away by saying you've moved, but perhaps you still miss the high rise, don't you? You're just trying to steal it away from us by telling some random lies. I won't be fooled by that. On the contrary, do you think someone who gets paid with a modest amount of salary can afford to pay for a high rise? What are you talking about? Hector is only 40 years old and he's been promoted to be the department manager. He's not just an ordinary office worker. He's an upper-class, super elite office worker. Hector hasn't been promoted. Not only is he still a section chief, but I heard that he's in danger of being demoted. What? That can't be true! I started my own company when my children enrolled at elementary school. After my company got off the ground, Hector gradually changed. At work, he seems to be handing over his work to his colleagues and doing nothing these days. Even when he was in danger of being demoted, he continued to slack off and had no sense of crisis at all. I guess he thinks that if he gets fired, he'll be fine because I'm there to support him. Although he is no longer doing housework, childcare, or even working, he is still a father. I was holding out the divorce for the sake of the children. What? Are you saying that my son is lying to me? That's right, because you always say that you love your son so much. Hector just wants to look good in front of other people. So he said that he bought the high-rise with his own money anyway, am I right? Yes! Hector said that he got promoted to be the department manager and that his salary will go up. Both you and your son really disgust me. Hector bought a high-rise with my money without paying a penny himself. He made up a story about my infidelity to kick me out so that he can get alimony from me and ownership of the high rise. The fact that you offered to live together with us was a good chance for Hector because he can get rid of me without getting his own hands dirty. Truly, you and your son are foolish. But it's too late. I already hired a lawyer and I'm preparing for a trial. A trial? Yes, before Hector puts his plan into action. I'm glad that I caught the proof that he's having an affair. Since we already have all the evidence, Hector's plan is no longer possible to be done. Therefore, if you want to continue to live in that room, please discuss that with your son and buy it from me. I will sell it to you with the market price. I won't raise the price, but I won't give you any discount either. By the way, Hector seems to be paying a lot of money to his lover. I doubt he has much money saved up. He seems to have spent it all in anticipation of getting a lot of alimony from me. So instead of buying a high rise, I doubt he can even afford to pay for a living next month. He seems to be contributing more than his own salary by using credit card. Wait a minute! I don't get it at all. So you're saying that I can't live in this high rise anymore? After all the trouble I went through to get rid of you? If you can't buy it at the market price, I'll have to ask you to leave. I will sell it to someone who is worthy of living there, not someone who can't even pay the rent. Oh yeah, and I won't let you see your grandchildren at all from now on. What? Stop joking! The children will be sad if they don't see their grandmother. You can have a divorce, but it's irresponsible of you as a parent to make the children sad. They don't seem to miss you at all. Whenever they visited you, they said that you were speaking ill about me endlessly. You yelled at the store clerks whenever you went out with them. They have come to the point where they don't want to visit their grandmother anymore. Living with you for the past months has been very stressful for the kids. They were overjoyed when I told them that we were going to live in a different house. Oh no! But you'll let them see my son, right? He's their father! No, I won't let them see Hector either. 
It seems that the children were aware of his infidelity. They said they heard a stranger's voice coming from their father's room on the day they came home early from morning classes. When I told them about the separation, they told me that their father asked them to keep that as a secret. What kind of father would allow his children to have such a nasty secret? I can't believe he would bring an adulterer into the house where his children live. They are just kids. They'll forget all of that soon. It's just one time. How can they hate their own father just because of that? For kids, family troubles will stay in their minds. Even if it was just once, it's enough to make them not trust their father. I have a responsibility to protect my kids from people who can't even understand such things. I will not let you and your son have anything to do with my kids from now on. Oh, thank goodness that I didn't get lost. Well then, you'll be hearing from my lawyer for more details. Until then, enjoy your life in the high-rise for the time being. Goodbye. Wait a minute! Alice! Hey! Let's talk about it! I have nowhere to live if this house is gone! Oh, please come back. I'll apologize. I beg you. Please, Alice. And so the divorce was finalized. Of course, Hector didn't have enough money to pay for the rent at the high rise. Both he and his mother were evicted from there. In addition, he had to pay alimony and child support to me. His already small income became even smaller and his life became a living brick. My ex-husband, who despised his own family and contributed all of his income to the affair, begged to be allowed to live in his lover's house, but he was rejected without a second thought. Now they live in a small room in a very cheap, old, broken-down apartment with no bathroom and a shared toilet. Later, a plan to build a large commercial facility near the tower block was proposed and the land's prices rose. I was relieved to be able to sell off the high-rise with just a little loss. I'm now living peacefully with my children in my new house. Hey Mark, what's up? Hey, about this three-day weekend coming up. Uh, hey Mark, are you there? Sorry, I was in the middle of work. Couldn't answer it. I was finally able to get my phone out and look at your message. Yeah, so uh, what about the three-day weekend? That's right, I was just thinking about the three-day weekend that's coming up and figured it would be a good time as I need to go on a little trip. What do you say? A uh, trip, huh? Like somewhere overnight? Yeah, why not? I mean, we haven't had a vacation in so long. As a matter of fact, we haven't really gone out much, even so for drinks, so come on. So, it's a three-day weekend. Let's purge for once and go out somewhere exciting. Please, please... As a matter of fact, I was just searching the web for some potential spots. I picked out a few, so tell me what you think. Uh, yeah, uh, sounds good and all, but I don't think I can make it. <laughs> really sorry, Sarah. I just can't take a trip anywhere. Huh? Seriously? Why? Why not? We haven't been anywhere this year, and you're always working. When are we ever gonna go for Pete's sake? The same time last year, we were going all those trips. What happened to that? Yeah, well, that was then. This is now. I have to work over the weekend. Things have gotten busier the past year, that's all. Are you kidding me? Why'd you agree to work on a weekend? Come on, take your weekend off. I insist. I really can't. I'm right in the middle of a huge project. Besides, it will affect the year-end bonus that I was counting on. I gotta show results. I'm sorry, but I just can't get out of it. I can't believe you, Mark. You're saying that work is way more important to you than me? That's what you're saying, right? No, you got it all wrong, Sarah. I work because you're important to me. I just don't want you to suffer financially, that's all. I want to provide for you, give you the best life possible. It's not all about money, you know. You're just no fun recently. You're always talking about work and money. Life, it's not all about money. You're always going on about not having money and that you need to work. What's more, you're always telling me to cut back on expenses. Urging me to use coupons at supermarkets, cut back on using the air conditioner too much, stuff like that. 
You never take me anywhere recently, and it's all about economizing. We always seem to be on a tight budget. This is no life. It's just boring. Like I said, I'm really sorry. But you have to admit that we, you know, we've been spending a bit more than we were before, if you know what I mean. Tell you what, once I get the year-end bonus, well, I'll take you on a vacation. Anywhere you want, I promise. What do you say? So please wait until then. I just want you to be patient, okay? No way. That just won't do, Mark. I want to go on a vacation this coming weekend no matter what. Did you know that our neighbor, the Johnsons, are going to Hawaii? Karen was over here yesterday bragging all about it. All my other friends are going somewhere this weekend too. Yeah, well, I really can't do anything about that. I have to work. What can I say? They have, your, they have their life. We have ours. Have a little understanding, would ya? I said we'll take a vacation later this year. Are you seriously saying that? You want me to sit quietly at home like a good little housewife and count coupons and cook meals for you? You want me to turn off all the lights and be a budget-conscious Scrooge? Are you totally out of your mind for God's sake? Come on, Sarah, are you overreacting? You're blowing this thing way out of proportion. All I'm asking is that you have a little patience and understanding, that's all. I'm working and doing it for you. You could at least understand that, can't you? I'm sick and tired of all of this. I don't want to hear your excuses anymore. I hate you. I no longer love you. You know what? Don't even bother to come home tonight. I don't want to see you. Don't want me to see, huh? Are you serious? Besides, all this, I mean, having to work. It's all because you're... It's because you're... Oh, forget it. Let's just... We calm down and think this through, huh? Hey, Sarah, are you seeing this? I just saw this. A divorce paper? Seriously? Is this some kind of joke? I stayed overnight at the hotel last night. I just got home and saw it sitting on the kitchen table. This is you, right? You put this here, right? No joke. That's exactly what it is. Divorce papers. What can I say? And for your information, I fell in love with another guy. A guy who loves me and will take me wherever I want to go. Hold on a second, Sarah. Are you serious? Is this some kind of joke? I said, it's no joke. I'm divorcing you. I'm sick and tired of living like this anymore. I held out for long enough. Recently, you've just put me aside like I didn't even exist. You working on a weekends is proof enough that you don't care about me. Even if you love me, you'd at least take me on weekends or even just a Sunday off to take care of me. Besides, why is it that you're always working? even on weekends, and still not have any money to speak of. How could you even say that? You know why I have to work on the weekends. Are you the type of guy that once you get what you want, there's no longer any need to value it? Well, there are plenty of guys out there that want me and value me, so there. I don't need you anymore. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do over my life with a much better guy who's rich, a guy who will take care of me. So goodbye, Mark. See you around. See you? This makes no sense. Let's calm down and think this through, for God's sake. There's nothing to think about. You sit there and think about what you put me through. Goodbye. Hey Mark, if you're seeing this, answer me right away. What is this? Why can't I use my credit card? It's been rejected. I need to use it right away, so call them or something and fix this. Do you really think you can use it after all that? I didn't think you were so dumb, Sarah. After what you pulled, the first thing I did was to cancel your credit card. Apply for your own if you need it so bad. Apply for my own? Are you nuts? If I can't use my credit card, I can't function for Christ's sake. I'm doing all my shopping, transportation, bills with the card. I use it for everything. How am I supposed to live, you idiot? Stop right there. Let me, let me ask you something. Why the hell are you even using my card? I thought we got divorced. That's what you said last week. You left the divorce papers, and you loved another guy, and I haven't seen you since. That was all a joke. Can't you take a friggin' joke, Mark? You were always ignoring me, putting me aside for work. All you think about is work. 
I just thought I would teach a lesson is all. Uh, a joke, really? Yeah, you were always saying how busy you were and that you had no money. I just wish you learned your lesson. Put yourself in my shoes for once. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah, right. Teaching me a lesson, huh? That's rich. Hey, by the way, I looked at the credit card info. Are you currently traveling somewhere? Looks like you're having a fun time over on the West Coast. Wait a sec, am I seeing this correctly? You're like using a thousand bucks a day! Just in the last week you've spent- Holy cow! This is nuts! What the hell are you spending all the money on for God's sake? And you're using my card on all this crap? This is downright crazy! Well, that's because you won't take me anywhere, that's why. What was I supposed to do? Just forget all that and call the card company and get them to okay this card. I need to use it. If you don't allow me to use the card, I won't be able to get home. I hardly have any cash on me. I can't even use the ATM. Or are you saying that you don't even care if I'm home? Sorry, no can do. Why the hell do I have to let you use my credit card? Have you gone totally bonkers? Why? Because you're my husband, that's why. Huh? I'm not your husband anymore. We got divorced, remember? Wait, pardon me? Those divorce papers, you left them at home. So I went the next day and submitted them down at City Hall. We're officially divorced. We're no longer husband and wife. Clear enough for you? Wait. Oh my god, are you pulling my leg? You actually signed it and no way. Why the hell did you do that? Well, let's see. Because you said you wanted a divorce? Anyways, I just got sick and tired of all this. I worked my butt off for you and your family. But in the end, this is what I get in return. Like I said, I'm fed up. Uh, wait. What are you talking about? What do you mean, my family? Come on, Sarah. You haven't forgotten already, have you? About six months ago, your dad's business was on the verge of bankruptcy. He asked me to help out, financially, to try and get the company back on an even keel. You do remember that, right? You were there with your dad, begging me to help out and save the company. I relented and sent your father $30,000 to help out. And then, month after month, I helped out as best I could. Don't tell me you forgot that. I distinctly remember telling you that we were going to have to come back on vacations and going out for a while. At least until your dad's business recovered. No way you're telling me you forgot that! No way! Did you really forget all that? Oh, uh, well, yeah, I was just... Remember when you asked me about going on vacation over that three-day weekend? Do you know why I couldn't go on vacation? Remember I said I had to work? Well, I didn't want to say anything because it seemed I'll be blaming you and your family for our financial woes. I didn't want to bring it up. What was I supposed to say? We don't have any money for a vacation because of you and your family? Did you really want me to say that? I didn't want to hurt your feelings, so I didn't bring it up, but... What did you do? You said I didn't make enough, that I was poor. Give me a break, Sarah. Always penny pinching? Yeah, well, I had no choice. Why do you think I was working long hours for? Even on weekends, huh? Tell me that. Uh, I didn't mean anything by it. Sorry, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, and you said you loved someone else and then you wanted a divorce. You wanted a do-over. Isn't that what you said? So, you leave the divorce papers and leave. What was I supposed to think? Yeah, she's just joking. Did you really think I would just ignore it? I was wondering what you were doing the past week. I find out you're on vacation using my credit card. Nice. I canceled the credit card and you get all upset. Go figure. Is that your way of teaching me a lesson? Who the hell do you think you are? Please, Mark. I'm sorry. I really am. It's just that I forgot all about that. You really think it's as simple as that, Sarah? You forgot? Really? The reason why we can't go on a trip and have to cut back on expenses, all that, was all because I lent you and your family all that money. Don't tell me you forgot that. How could you forget such a thing? Because I lent your dad that money, he was able to get back on his feet. You really have nerve talking to me like that after all I did for you and for your family. So you think maybe I should have just said it back then, huh? That we, that we don't have money because of your dad's business? Would prefer I said that? No, please, Mark. I, I was only... I'm sorry. I'm not joking. I really did forget simple as that. 
I'm truly sorry. Please, Mark, forgive me. No need to apologize anymore. I really don't care what you do from now on. I already submitted the divorce papers, and for your information, I also sold the house. As for your stuff, I send them all over to your parents' place. I already moved into my new place. All the paperwork has been taken care of. We have no kids, so at least that's good. Makes things a lot easier. Oh yeah, and about that $30,000 I lent your dad. I discussed it with him, and he'll pay me back in installments. We already talked about it the other day, just so you know. Wait, just hold on a second. I don't want a divorce. That wasn't my intention. That never was my intention. Like I said, I already filed it. But, but that's not official. I didn't agree to anything. I don't want to. I never wanted a divorce. But you signed the divorce papers, which makes it official. Who's gonna believe you? You signed it. You wanted it. Clear as day. The divorce is final. All our possessions and assets have been divided up. We're complete strangers now. No, please. You can't do this, Mark. Please. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I don't want a divorce. How many times do I have to repeat myself? We're already divorced. I don't want to hear your apologies or your excuses anymore. Just make sure you pay back all the debt. Please. No. No. Let's sit down and talk this over, please. Uh, could you come pick me up? I, I can't go home. I can't use my card and I have no cash on me. Pardon me? Not serious. You really have nerve asking me that. I'm sorry, but I can't. I'm busy with work today. Figure it out yourself. Anyways, I didn't have time to go picking up my ex-wife. You said you have a new guy. Ask him. He's way more generous than me, right? <laughs> that was all made up. I was just trying to make you jealous. Please, I'm not seeing anybody. Please, Mark, cancel that divorce. Get those papers back. Do something. I won't do this kind of stuff anymore, so please. Like I said, we're strangers now. Have a good life, Sarah. It was nice knowing you. After that, I put a block on all her messages. As for Sarah, her parents went and picked her up. I got a call from Sarah's father the next day apologizing for the whole mess. He later told me that Sarah would not believe the predicament she was in. She apparently returned to the old house, which is empty now. She even went down to City Hall to verify that we were really divorced. She finally came to the realization that it was true. That she, that she was really divorced and the house was gone. But she wasn't quite finished. She came barging into my office one day demanding to talk to me. She told the front reception she told the front receptionist that she was my wife, but was told by the receptionist that she was divorced. This really ticked her off and she made quite a scene. The security had to restrain her, and eventually the police were called and she was hauled away. Her folks had to bail her out. I heard she's now living at her grandparents' home somewhere back east. And by back east, I mean she had to take a plane there which in turn means I will probably never see her again. I can't understand why her parents put up with her. I feel bad for her folks and having to receive payments from them for the money I lend them, but her father insisted that a debt is a debt. At least her father is a man of his word, and I'm grateful for that. After the debt is paid off, I suppose that part of my life will eventually become a distant memory.